É funk brasileiro. UIM FNH2 World Championship returned to Portimao, Portugal, a 14th time for round three of the 2016 season. Located in the Algarve region of southern Portugal, Portimao is a beautiful and scenic tourism destination where a sun, sea, and surf lifestyle dominates year round. Portimao is a leisurely beach city that lives and breathes in sync with the ocean. The coastline is truly breathtaking, with stunning cliffs and rocky shores to explore, and of course kilometers and kilometers of gorgeous, sandy beaches that attract people from far and wide, basking, swimming, tanning and reveling from dawn to dusk. Historically a fishing town, Portimao offers something for everyone from some of the best golfing in the country to excellent shopping and fabulous cuisine with seafood straight from the sea and fresh onto the plate. Portimao is renowned for its sardine dishes to which a whole festival has been dedicated and locals and visitors fill the restaurants to get a taste. The city has a beautiful historic city center topped by a cathedral with year-round festivities and concerts. Little surprise that the UIM F1H2 World Championship comes here again and again, as thousands once again line the shores to watch some of the world's greatest racing on water as the 15th Grand Prix of Portugal got underway. Local supporters would have their own Portuguese driver to cheer for in Portimao, tour veteran Duarte Benevente. The three-day event also featured F4 racing and crowds could get a taste of the power and g-force of an F1H2O boat by taking a thrilling ride in the F1H2O two-seater. Let's see what happened in the last round. The previous round was in Evian, France. Alex Carrilla signaled a return to form with a brilliant pole position performance in BRM qualifying. And he used it to good advantage, leading from the get-go, but pushed every inch of the way by Sean Torrente in second, with defending world champion Philip Schiap chasing the battling pair in third. Jonas Anderson of Sweden stunned the field as he flew past Schiap to move all the way up into third. But yet again, his race was cut short with engine trouble in lap 19. He was followed out by Schiap just two laps later. Disappointment yet again for the Frenchman in home waters. Torrente passed his former teammate Alex on lap 10, but he hit a pin on turn three, which cost him a drive-through penalty, bumping him back to fifth and handing the lead once again to Alex Carella. Behind him was an unexpected name, Philip Roms, in second position, up from 10th. Torrente battled to get back up there, passing Eric Stark and moving up to third, but try as he may, he was unable to get past Roms, who enjoyed a career best runner up finish. Alex Carrillo won his 12th career Grand Prix title, catapulting him to the top of the world standings, 11 points clear of Torrente in second with round one winner Schiap bumped down to third after a no points result in France. There are 19 drivers from 10 teams and 11 countries competing at the 15th Grand Prix of Portugal. 
the man to beat, three-time world champion Alex Karela of Team Abu Dhabi. <laughs> who was fresh off a round two win in Evian and ready to continue his campaign to reclaim the world title that he has lost to Shiap for two years running. He appears to have hit his stride in Evian with speed and reliability on his side. But can he find the consistency to sustain his campaign? Victory team's Sean Torrente debuted a fantastic new Moore boat in Evian and he is loving it. Portimao would be his second race in the new boat, and the famously gung-ho racer is relishing a battle on the Arad River. He just had to make sure he kept his boat the right way up to avoid another episode like that spectacular crash with Moritz Stromoy last time here. Moritz Stromoy made history here in 2011, winning her first pole, making her the first and only woman to do so. I mean, this, this race was my uh, international breakthrough in Formula 1 and uh, with the pole and then leading the race, uh, it was a great weekend. Unfortunately, we crashed out, but I mean, that happens in this sport, so yeah. Two-time defending world champion Philip Schiap and his CTIC F1 China team had some bad luck in round two. They have one of the best teams out there, but a busted crankshaft thwarted their efforts in Evian. With an eye on a possible third straight world title, they were determined to win in Portimao. We have a problem with the setup to the engine. Uh, we think uh, we make a little mistake and we destroy uh, two engines, uh, mine and Leo. Very bad luck and uh, we are very disappointed, but uh, it's a game. Mechanic is mechanic and uh, now we are ready for Portimao. Two-time world champion Sammy Celio of Baba Racing is a long way from his best form, struggling to finish a race and get back on the podium. He wants to put his bad luck behind him. It's a shame that we had two, two bad races with the engine failure, so let's see. Of course, we never give up. We will fight till the end. A few times it worked. This year may be difficult, but we focus race by race and try to do the best. And uh, First of all, I hope to have a trouble uh, free weekend, so I just could show what I'm able to do it, how good is the boat, and to find a good prop and uh, have the fun there. His teammate Philip Roms is on an upward graph, recording his best ever result in Evian, second only to Carilla and beating Torrente. And then, of course, there is the only Portuguese driver on the tour, F1 Atlantic Interpass veteran Duarte Benevente, who's been racking up consistent points race after race. Uh, it's going quite well. Uh, we are scoring points every race, which is our target, and uh, we hope to increase now the results. I love to race here. I, uh, the conditions are perfect in and out of the water, so every driver, I think, loves to, to be here. He'll have the home crowds to cheer him on in Portimao. And you can't ever count out Jonas Anderson, a four-time Grand Prix winner who has a knack for coming out of nowhere and overturning everyone's best laid plans. The course on the Arad River is a tricky seven-pin circuit with tides and river currents. It has a very long bend instead of a long straight designed to avoid a sandbank in the middle of the waterway. Yeah, actually, it's a really tricky course, and it's, it feels like so, it's so small, so it will be really interesting tomorrow. And now when the tide is going, it's really rough water coming in, and so it's, it's difficult. It looks flat, but uh, that, like the boat just jumping. Sometimes this is more dangerous because the speed is higher, so when the wave's coming, it's, you get more problem. In Evian, the speed was lower all the time. Today it looks like that, it's very, very calm, but then uh, when the tide getting down and if the wind is against the tide, then, then there are some waves and tricky places because the current is quite strong in this river. The PRM qualifying was run on race day morning due to high winds and low tides the previous day. It would be run without the final Q3 shootout with the fastest 12 drivers from Q1 moving on to a 30 minute Q2 session which would determine the starting lineup for the race. 
Philip Roms of Baba Racing, a runner-up in Evian, had a disappointing start. <laughs> To his round three campaign with mechanical problems in Q1. I think we have some little uh, mechanical problem with the engine, so we must check before the race. Christoph Larigo of F1 Atlantic Interpass was off the pace, while his Portuguese teammate and local hero Duarte Benavente secured a spot in Q2 early on. Cedric de Guin of Team Maverick, who placed well in Evian, was struggling as was Nigel Bin Hendy, Jesper Force, and Mike Sumura. In an identical episode from Q1 and Evian, Moritz Stromoy and Francesco Cantando fought it out for 12th spot, with Stromoy once again finding the pace to bump Cantando and move into Q2. Qualifying just ahead of Stromoy was Polish driver Bartek Marsalek, who carried the standard for Blaze Performance Team into Q2. Schiap was fastest in Q1, followed by Ahmed Al Hamali, Duarte Benavente, Jonas Anderson, and Sami Celio. It was a highly competitive Q2 session with less than two seconds separating all 12 drivers. Sean Torrente was still on the dock as other boats began racing, the team desperate to start the boat, working frantically as the minutes passed by, trying to solve the problem before getting out on the water. Things went from bad to worse as Victory Team had to take the boat back to the dry pit to find a solution. A good start position is crucial and Torrente was not happy. <music> Meanwhile, Moritz Stromoy, the 2011 pole winner, found herself struggling this time around, settling for 12th. Also struggling were Thani Alkamzi and Zhang Ziwei putting in dozens of laps each, but unable to improve their times. Jonas Anderson was fast, throwing down the gauntlet with a time of 43.31. But Anderson was trumped by his fellow Swede, Eric Stark, who set a blistering lap time of 43.19. Alex Carella, winner of pole position in round two in Evian, struggled this time around, but still managed a time of 43.25, which earned him third place. Philip Schiap's best time of 43.26 wasn't enough to beat Corella or Stark. The man of the half hour was Sammy Celio. The Finn knew he had a fast boat, but he'd struggled for so many Grand Prix since 2015. This time, he was almost perfect. Tight on the turns, smooth on the straights, a blistering lap time of 43.11 put him in the lead. But then with just four minutes left on the clock, Victory Team finally got Torrente back on the water. Torrente had his target set, Celio's 43.11. He got out there in his new Moore boat, seeking to topple Celio. 43.27, Torrente managed fifth position, but at least he was able to dig himself out from 12. Uh, we had an electrical issue, so we came in and we uh, changed the component, went back out, and um, obviously we were in 12th, and we managed to get two laps in and back up to fifth place, so we did pretty well. Celio takes the top prize. The two-time world champion broke a string of bad luck to win the 24th pole position of his career, and the first since Porto 2015. Stark second on the starting grid, followed by Corella, Schiap, and Torrente in fifth, the three separated by just two hundredths of a second. Anderson in sixth. Okay, now changing the boat all the time, all these problems what we have in the, our engines, so it has been challenging to find the setup. Now we were lucky to find it quite good here. At least I could prove myself that I'm still able to drive boat fast and be in the top, so very nice morning. With the day's action over, drivers, teams and their families were treated to some local hospitality with a wonderful gala dinner as the city welcomed the F1H2O family for the 14th time to Portimao.
final preparations are completed as drivers say they're <laughs> Goodbyes. Can Cedric Deguin and Philip Roms build on their last rounds? I did a mistake in uh, planning for the time trial, so I'm not happy with uh, start six, but the boat works very nice, so anything can happen, and it's 48 laps, so I'm gonna push maximum as always. It's always difficult, all the drivers are good, but you know, cross your fingers and hope you're first up there. Can Corella continue his good form? Can Torrente win it here? No, I mean, we're, uh, my team did just an amazing job. We had an ignition problem at the end of uh, Q2, or Q1, excuse me, and they replaced the ignition system in 12 minutes and got me back on the water, so I was able to get one real lap, and we almost grabbed the pole, so I was really happy with that. Um, but for the race, we're happy to start fifth, look for a good start, and, and we can go forward from there, you know that. Can Schiap make up for the disaster in France? A third place start on the grid is not his comfort zone. Celio in pole, but he'll have to hold off start Corella and Schiap to his right. Expect a fight from Torrente in fifth. Benevente starts in seventh. Roms has his work cut out for him in 14th. The seconds tick away. The teams and drivers tense with anticipation. The lights go out, the race begins. What a start from Alex Carella and Philip Schiap as they leave Paul Sitter Celio and Eric Stark struggling behind them. Great start from Alex Carella. Sammy Celio has a sluggish start, dropping back to third as the field approaches the commitment buoy. Francesco Contando also struggling at the back as he's passed by his Blaze performance teammate, Bartek Marsalek. Alex Carell and Philip Schiap are neck and neck as they head to the commitment buoy. They come close, nearly touching. Carella has the inside lane advantage, but Schiap is right up there with him. Celio just behind in third. Further back, Eric Stark has dropped back from second, and he's passed by his fellow Swede Jonas Anderson, who then sets his sights on Torrente to his starboard on the outside. Torrente comes in and Anderson goes flying off his rooster tail, landing with a thud, but continuing the race as the crowds watch on in their thousands. Cantando has made up for his poor start to pass Zhang Ziwei and Philip Roms to reclaim 12th spot as he finds clean water on the inside, seeking the speed he needs to move up the field. Cantando coming around the bend as he speeds past Roms, the Evian runner-up. Zhang Ziwei also had a poor start, but he's now going head-to-head -head with Roms as Cantando leaves them both behind. Ahmed Alhamali, who started at the back after an engine change, has an exceptional start, moving up from 18th to challenge Duarte Benevente in 8th. He tries to take Benevente, but the Portuguese veteran shuts him out. Up in the lead, Carella looks imperious. Shiap chasing him down, and Celio makes a move on the inside, zipping in and out, looking for a shot at the Frenchman to no avail. Shiap on his guard. The world champion wants to make up for Evian and reclaim the top seat from Carella here. Behind them, two of the most thrilling drivers on the tour lock horns as Jonas Anderson tries to catch Sean Torrente. Anderson followed by Eric Stark, and then Daniel Kamzi in seventh. Behind Al Kamzi, Ahmed Al Hamali continues to give chase to Duarte Benevente, trying to nab eighth place from the Portuguese F1 Atlantic Interpass Ace. But Benevente is not budging as he shuts Al Hamali out, leaving the Emirati driver in his spray. Eric Stark has had yet another poor start, dropping from second position down to sixth behind Anderson as he tries to climb his way back up. In lap five, Sean Torrente trying to claw his way closer to Sammy Celio in third. The man from Miami using his exceptional speed to take the turns tight and put the pressure on the competition. Bartek Marshalek is in 10th position ahead of Moritz Stromoy, who was leading the race here in 2011 before a collision with Torrente ended both their races. Stromoy's teammate Larigo, who had a surprise fifth place result in Evian, struggling this time in 17th position. 
Meanwhile, Torrente's victory teammate Nader Bin Hendi zooms past Zhong Ziwei to move into 15th position. Great racing from one of the most... <laughs> Successful class one drivers of all time. Contando in 12th is giving chase to Maritz Stromoy. He cuts in, but she pulls away. Her EMIC teammate Mike Sumura is getting lapped by Jonas Anderson as Anderson continues his quest for a podium spot. But there's a problem with Corella's trim. Philip Schiap overtakes the leader and takes command of the race. Terrible luck for Alex Corella, but he recovers. Philip Schiap now exactly where he's been dying to be, in the lead and in control. Corella back on pace, but having dropped to second, now he has to worry about Celio and Torrente, who are gaining fast on the Italian, trying to cut down the distance. Torrente is pushing hard on Celio, trying to close down that gap, but Sammy Celio is fending off the Americans successfully. The Finnish 2007 and 2010 world champion desperate to be back on the podium. Further down the field, Duarte Benevente holding steady in 10th, and to his starboard, Daniel Kamzi speeds up and locks horns with Eric Stark. Daniel Kamzi overtaking the struggling Swede as he moves up a position. Philip Rahm's not making a lot of headway, trying to get into the top 10, but a far cry from his brilliant runner-up finish in the last round as the rest of the field follow. Frenchman Cedric de Guin of Maverick team finished a fantastic fourth in the last round in Evian, getting his best ever F1H2O result. More trim problems for Alex Carella on lap 30. The Italian is passed by Sammy Celio, and then he's passed by Sean Torrente as Alex Carella drops from leading the race to fourth position. But Carella's woes continue as he's also passed by Jonas Anderson. Carella drops back to fifth. Up in the lead, Philip Schiap is a happy man with clear waters and smooth sailing ahead of him as he enjoys a comfortable lead. Bartek Marsalek of Blaze Performance Team putting in a solid performance, currently in 10th position. Now let's look at the start of the race again. What a start from Corella, just perfect as he shoots from the pontoon and takes the lead right at the start. Here it is on the slow-mo. Corella literally couldn't have started any sooner. He goes right as the light goes out, making it true perfection. That's what got him the lead. Back to the race. In lap 42, Cantando is falling back with problems as he's passed by Zhang Ziwei and Philip Roms. Philip Schiap in command with Sammy Celio in second and Sean Torrente third. Schiap's round one win was a great start to the year, but the disappointment in Evian needs to be made up for, and he's on track to do just that. Sammy Celio is also on track to put all those past disappointments behind him and claim a podium spot again. But can Celio fend off Sean Torrente's determined and aggressive racing style? The final lap. Philip Schiap has done it. He makes up for Evian with his seventh career Grand Prix win. And Sammy Celio does it too. Sammy Celio back on the podium after a long absence. Sean Torrente finishes third. Anderson fourth. Carilla still pulls off a fifth place and seven golden points. An eighth place for Portugal's Benevente. Alhamali and Marcelec complete the top 10. Roms makes two with 13th this time. Keep getting the points, keep getting the points. Now we're only four behind. I'll take it. That's a rough weekend to get a third, so yeah, we're good. Real happy. Yeah, I had amazingly pole here in Portimao, and then the race started. Uh, I don't know what's happened. It's probably the engine was so safe set up, it really didn't fire it up immediately. And get the start, Alex Carella closed me, closed me and Eric Stark in the first turn a little bit, and it was a hard race but finally back in the podium and finished the race. Was very, very pleased for this. Yes, for me, for this race, we have just one objective to win the race. After Evian, it's a bad result and we are third on the championship. And if we won't win the championship, just one plane wins the race. 
and okay, he's down, I'm very happy, and now just take pleasure for my team. That win brings Xi up to 40 points and second place in the world standings, just two points behind Carella at the top. Torrente is third, Anderson fourth, followed by Philip Roms in fifth, and Celio moving up to sixth. The traditional F1H2O flag is passed on to the mayor of Harbin as another exceptional Grand Prix of Portugal comes to an end. See you in China for round four of the 2016 UIM F1H2O World Championship.